we'll start with Eddie. If we can, guys, then we'll come to Michael and then to James. Take it away. Eddie, um, big news today with the co-captains. Why have you gone that way instead of maybe more traditional with one captain? Uh, well, we want to do things differently. That's that's the start with. You know, we want to change the Wallabies. Uh, and having, you know, not worked day to day with these two guys over the last three months, you know, we've been having a number of leadership group meetings by Zoom and, and when possible in person, I think the combination of slips and hoops together gives us a very strong apex to the leadership. Then underneath that, there's a there's a group of players that are going to be really important to support them. But I think the combination of character and style between the hoops and slips and, and yeah, you don't get two more experienced players in the world in Test Rugby. So that's a, that's a big advantage for us. And you can see by the squad, we've got a, a good core of experienced players, but we've also got some young guys coming through that are going to push the barrel. So I think together they can do a really great job. Was it easy choice picking these two out of that group of experienced uh, leaders that you've been meeting with given their prior experience having captain in Australia? No, not easy at all. Um, you know, a lot of soul searching, a lot of thought, a lot of consultation with various people about what, what the best way to do it is. But we feel that these two guys can do a great job for us. You, you said you want to do things differently and yet no disrespect to these two lads that are there but they've already been captains. Was there a compulsion at all to really change it up and just put your stamp on it by picking someone else entirely? Or how, how did you sort of settle on, on wrestle with that? Well, we want to do things differently but better. Um, and one of the things about any great team is that the head's experienced and we want experience up there. Because um, if, you, if you've played 120 tests or you've captained your country for 65 tests, you've seen it all, uh, you've got an idea of what you should do, and we don't want to lose that. That's what great teams are about. Was there anyone else who came closer? Can you name some names, perhaps, before you decided on this? Uh, I never talk about hypothetical. That's good. Who, who's, who's these two are on the field at the same time? They start a test together. Who's taking the lead, taking charge on the captaincy role, the decisions? We'll work that out in the morning coffee. We'll flick the coin and see, right, <laughs> slips your go today, hoops your go. No, we'll work that out, mate. No, we'll, they'll work it out. More importantly, they'll work it out. What about if um, you envision that one of them will be on the field at all times? Is that another reason why you've done that? Or? Uh, well, it helps. It helps. Um, you know, as a prop these, these days, because of the intensity of the game, it's hard to play longer than 50, 60 minutes consistently. Um, and hoops is an 80-minute player. So that does help. Um, but we know with HIA and we know with, with injury that there may be a situation where they're both not on the field and, and that's where the leadership group will fill the vacuum. Eddie, I suppose you also, one of the things you said, because uh, you hadn't been around Wallabies camp, was you wanted to see how players reacted to guys that look like leaders. So what have you seen from the players and how they react around uh, these guys as natural leaders? Did you see that? Overtly, all the time. Yeah. They to these guys. Well, not so much slips because we I haven't had a chance to work with slips only for two days here. Um, but I've seen what he does on the field with the Brumbies over a long period of time, and you can you can feel that that leadership force and hoops, particularly this week. Uh, Kudji has been absolutely outstanding. You know, we put the players in some difficult situations where they had to work out. We played 15 versus 13, 13 versus 15, and the teams had to work it out on the run what they were going to do. And, and the hoops just show the experience that he's had as a captain, and therefore the two of them together was a, is, a, is a powerful force for us. Like, it's a winning edge for us, guys. Winning edge for us. Um, Fraser McRice had a massive season. He's the Miners 80-minute player. Where, where do you think Fraser's at in terms of getting a look in in these few games just to see what? You know, well, he's in the, the World Cup. he's in the squad of thirty three, mate. Yeah. So that means he's good. got a that means he's got a good show. So do you reckon that it, is it likely that those two might split minutes, or how, how, how are you going to? Are you from Queensland? <laughs> <laughs> no, Tell ex well, no, just just yeah yeah, yeah so just just just, just, just surprise me. 
<laughs> You're from New South Wales. No, no, Queensland. Queensland, no, okay. Cover nationally. I think it's right. been a big topic over the years. Yeah, no, so it's a good battle, mate. Yeah. And 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 that's what we want. We want the most intense battles. Like Slips is going to have Angus Bell. He's going to have Gibbo breathing very heavily behind him. I was going to say something inappropriate there, so I won't. Uh, and that's what we want, mate. We want a really competitive squad. But one of the things the players spoke about last week as such an important aspect of being part of a good, good team and a good Wallaby team where you compete hard, but at the end of the day, these guys don't make the decision on selection. I do. And then they've got to get on with it, work with each other. If they don't get in the team, then how do they, how do they help that other player be better on that day? And that's what we want. Can you see a scenario where... Um, Hoops is replaced by Fraser, or the two play together. You know, you, in the past, uh, you used Bill War and George Smith for both opening sides on the field together. Can you see a scenario where that might be Hooper and Fraser together? Oh, I think it's premature to go down those selection computations now. You know, we'll have two guys competing for seven, and we want Kennedy to play seven. You know, we want Kennedy to play seven, six, and play on the wing. He's quick enough to play on the wing. That's why he's down as a utility player. Uh, and we need, we need to develop a, a team that's multi-dimensional because of the fact that with HIA, with red cards, yellow cards, you need to be able to adapt on the field. So nothing's, nothing's not possible um, and we need to develop that adaptability in the team. Um, what about yeah. you? Oh, sorry, Jimmy. Yeah. Um, I suppose over uh, the last four or five years, uh, number six has been a real uh, position where Australia's been trying to find the, the perfect solutions. Uh, you've got a number of options there, Tom Hooper, Leota, when, when he's fit. Um, Holloway, where's uh, number six in, in your yeah, eyes? No. How significant is the position, I guess I'm saying? Well, I think when you're playing against, you know, the particularly against the South Africa, and, and that's what we got in the first game, you know, the line-out's so important. You've got to be able to, you, you've got to, be able to win your ball well and then you've got to be able to put pressure on their ball and not allow them to win the ball where they want to win it. You know, they're a very play-by-territory type team and they like to win the ball in certain areas and we've got to be good enough to be able to take that away from them and make them win the ball in other areas. And then for us, be able to win the ball so it just doesn't allow them to rush all the time. Um, so having a jumping six is not absolute, but, but it's, it's probably going to be close to the mark. And, you know, as you said, we've got three good options there. Uh, Leoda, uh, Jed and... Um, who's the third one, you said? Uh, I said Hooper. Hooper, yeah. Tom Hooper, who's done really well at, at Super Rugby's, you know, come from basically nowhere. You know, halfway during the during the year, he was walking his dog mm. and now he's in the Wallaby squad. I don't know, has he got a dog? Oh, I think so. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah, what, what did you like about... What, what stood out for Tommy? I was gonna... Oh, combative, mate. Absolutely combative. Like, yeah, you know, Chiefs game, he's taking him on, he's into everything. Really good. Any further in the room, guys? Happy? Guys, we can come online for it for a, a couple. A few more Queensland players to go through here. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't exhausted can... yourself yet? We're all Australian, Come online for a couple and then we'll shift to, to Michael. Sometimes, mate. Uh, Eddie, if I can kick this off, um, uh, you've gone with Quade Cooper as one of. Three tens, uh, and and Bernd Foley's missed out, um, and Ben Donaldson's been included. Can you just talk a little bit about the tens, particularly? Thank you. Yeah, well, you know, Quade's, um, yeah, you know, he's a different sort of player, mate. Um, and if we can get him back to his best, he, he becomes a, a really competitive edge for us. Uh, young Carter Gordon's done well. Um, and Donaldson fills a utility role for us. Um, and, you know, there'll be, there could well be opportunities for, for foals further down the track. Um, and we'll just have to wait and see, mate. Uh, do, do you see that utility role, particularly someone who can play a 10 to 15, really important in a World Cup year where obviously you don't necessarily want to replace injured guys if they're only going to miss a week or two? Very important, mate. So, yeah, and that's why we've named them as utility players. Um, and we haven't picked this squad as a World Cup squad, but we're, we're, we're creating the structure of the team that'll take us to the World Cup. Um, and we need, a, we need a back row who can play wing, 
I'm serious about this. You know, hoops, hoops can probably do it. In his younger younger age, he was he was quick. He was faster than most of the wingers, and now he's probably as fast. Apart from Sully, when he's got his uh, cattle prod chasing him, um, and then Kenemy's Kenemy's quick enough to be a winger, and he's tall, rangy guy, good in the air. Um, so and Donaldson trained all week at fullback and was and can, and we know he can play ten well. Last couple online, please, guys. If anyone else has a question. Yeah, did you um, uh, did you seek any more exemptions other than those two for, uh, for the the Guido Law? Is five um, what you're after? Is there a cap there now for going forward to the World Cup, or could it be expanded? Do you think? Uh, I haven't really thought about that, mate. All I know is that the team we put in got improved. So, you did know, you, the CEO, CEO's Bernard, got off to a good start, um, mate. That's one for Bernard Foley as well. Sorry? Go again, Pat. didn't seek a spot for Bernard Foley as well. No, that was the team we selected and that team got approved, mate. One more online, guys, if anything, for Eddie before we go to Michael. Eddie, obviously some very, very accomplished players in that rehab group that you've got there. Will, will any of those guys travel to South Africa and, and are they in the selection frame at all or not for, not for game one? Uh, for game one, most of those players, apart from possibly Karevi. Is Karevi in the rehab? Karevi. Yeah, 